time with River Valley Community College. We offer three campuses, one in Claremont, Keene, and Lebanon. I'm here today with Kevin Crawick, our program director for respiratory therapy, and Sapna Young. Hi, Kevin. Hey, how are you, Amy? Good. Kevin, let's get started with just the basics. What is respiratory therapy? Sure. Respiratory therapy is a profession that uh, works underneath a physician in uh, multiple different areas. Uh, and we treat cardiopulmonary diseases. Um, we treat uh, everything from infants right on up to the elderly in um, all different types of places. So we're there to help the breathing. That's incredible. Tell us about yourself. How, how did you fall into the field? Well, like, like a lot of uh, high school kids, uh, getting out not knowing really what I wanted to do, there was a community college that was close by, so I decided I can work and go to the community college at the same time and save some, um, some money in my pocket. So they had a respiratory therapy program there, and I sat in on a lecture, and I was intrigued by it. Um, and I said, yeah, I think I could do this for a couple years until I figure out what I'm going to do. Uh, some 44 years later, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do, but I think, uh, I think this is a keeper. So started off at a community college. Uh, I received my bachelor's degree at uh, the University of Quinnipiac, Quinnipiac University and my master's in education from the University of Hartford. So you can build on a degree from a community college in respiratory therapy. And um, so far, it's afforded me a very good living. That's incredible, and it all started at a community college. All started out at a two-year school, community college, yes. That's amazing. So what first got you interested in respiratory therapy? Um, so my uh, educational background is in exercise physiology, and um, tying that into uh, my personal background, which is um, I have a family lineage of yoga. So I've sort of always been uh, introduced to the importance of breathing, um, just from a different avenue. And I knew I always wanted to go into healthcare. I wasn't 100% sure how. So being in the fitness world and in the yoga world for such a long time, um, the uh, respiratory therapy program was just such a great fit. I knew I wanted to go into critical care and be a part of that team. And uh, once I discovered respiratory therapy, it was just hopping on that train and just knowing it was like the perfect fit for what I was looking for. So, that's yeah. wonderful. That's incredible. Can you tell us about what the field of respiratory therapy is and what a new respiratory mm -hmm. therapist could expect? Sure. <clears throat> sure, Amy. Um, the field is wide open most of the time. Most respiratory therapists who graduate, um, graduate and take a national board test and then get their license in a particular state. They can work in hospitals, they can work in uh, long-term care facilities, uh, they can work out on their own in research even. Uh, so there's a lot of different avenues you can go to once you get your respiratory therapy uh, degree. Um, a lot of people like to start off in a large size hospital. Um, some of the best ones we have here are Dartmouth-Hitchcock, uh, the Elliott in Manchester, Catholic Medical Center, and of course, Concord Hospital. So uh, there's a lot of good hospitals the therapist can get experience in and find a home, find very comfortable with that. Once again, taking care of the lung diseases of the patients that come in there. That's incredible. So there's a lot of opportunity, it sounds like. So what kind of breathing mm -hmm. disorders do you treat? Breathing disorders would be something like asthma, um, emphysema, uh, chronic bronchitis. We also take care of uh, children, especially in the wintertime, that have uh, a lot of people know as croup. Uh, when their child comes in wheezing and sounds like a, a barking dog, so to speak. Uh, we also take care of newborns who are born prematurely. So we're in the OR uh, with the newborn intensive care team as well. So we take care of everyone from brand, brand new babies to you know, patients who are at the end of life and we're there to help them breathe. It sounds so rewarding. So what do you think of the best part of respiratory therapy? Um, so for me, it has a little bit of what Kevin has been saying. It's the versatility of it um, and really being able to know that um, I 
I can have this variety with my career. So, you know, when I graduate, I can, if I want to go to a large hospital and sort of be exposed to everything, I can do that. And then later on in my career, if I want to focus on, um, you know, neonatals or critical care, if, even if I want to get into pulmonary function testing, which is a little bit more stable schedule, you know, as life mm -hmm. evolves, um, you can really mold your career where you are. And then I think being a part of the critical care team is is really rewarding. Um, so being uh, with the intensive care um, specialists and, and with those nurses is really nice and, and you just feel very rewarded knowing that you're, you're a part of caring for somebody who's very sick um, and being able to kind of be uh, there with your niche sort of specialty. It does sound perfect. It sounds like it offers that work-life balance, but yeah. it's also so rewarding. Definitely. So now that we know a little bit about it, can you tell us about the program and what sure. it's like? What, mm. What's the classroom situation like? Sure. The respiratory therapy program at River Valley Community College is a two-year program. Although it's not just limited to two years, you can take it in three years um, and take your time going through. Uh, it it is, can be accomplished in two years. There is a classroom portion, there is a lab portion, and then there's a clinical portion. The classroom portion is where you learn the theory, learn the nuts and bolts of why you're doing something. We also have a brand new simulation lab that we can use and apply our knowledge to the mannequins instead of going right out there with patients. And then finally, uh, we have the students go out into clinical sites, into various hospitals throughout both Vermont and New Hampshire, uh, so they can get the hands-on experience of the, uh, of the field of respiratory therapy. So you can do it in two years. There, you do get an associate's degree in science. So there is some liberal arts credits that you have to take. Uh, but you can take that at any one of our campus uh, centers. So if you live closer to Lebanon, you can probably take your English and your math there. Or if you're in Keene, you can take it over there. The core respiratory therapy classes, because of the lab and so forth, are all held in Claremont. Uh, but you can take your first year and, and take the liberal arts classes and get them out of the way and then concentrate on your respiratory classes there. That's very interesting. So if you already had some college credits, could you transfer into the program? Oh, absolutely. Um, if you have college credits before, it's very easy to transfer those credits uh, into the program, and that way it saves you some money because you don't have to take those classes over again. Uh, so people who are making a career change um, are really just kind of figure that they don't have, um, are not getting from what their job is right now. If they've got college credit, I'd be more than happy to sit down with them and we can transfer those credits uh, right in. That's incredible. That saves you a lot of money. Can but, uh, So you get your associate's degree. Can you transfer it into a four-year degree easily? Yes, and we encourage that very strongly. Our um, national board, the American Association for Respiratory Care, strongly encourages our respiratory therapy students to continue on in their degree. And we have an affiliations agreement with quite a few colleges in the area, uh, Granite State College being one of the bigger ones, uh, that they can transfer their respiratory credits and uh, take a few more classes and end up with a baccalaureate degree. You can also now get a bachelor's degree in respiratory therapy at a lot of colleges across the country. And the best thing about it, most of these um, degrees are all online. They do not require a residency with them. So you can go on and get a bachelor's um, in respiratory therapy by taking a few more online courses after you graduate. How easy, so worth it. Yes, and uh, a bachelor's degree will open up more doors um, across the country. So if you want to go into education or if you want to go into management, you really need that upper level degree of at least a bachelor's degree, uh, and then you can go on from there. So as many doors as you want open, you can, you can open them with the right degree. That's incredible. So I heard you live in Nashua. Yes. And you can meet all the way. So the program is worth it. Absolutely. Um, What's been really unique about it is, one, um, being in a smaller program, um, we get a lot of attention from our professors, which has been really nice because, you know, they are really helpful with guiding us and getting to know us and really 
figuring out like where you would be a good fit. Um, so we're not sort of just going through the program and then getting thrown out there and kind of figuring it out ourselves. Um, so that's that was important for me to be in a little bit more of a smaller program um, as far as like our graduating class size, um, so that I could. Uh, you know, build solid relationships with our professors, with with my classmates, um, and it's nice because we do have the opportunity to go to um, hospitals of all different sizes, small, medium, large, um, in New Hampshire, in Vermont, and it's been it's been nice to meet a lot of um, past graduates and uh, you know current practicing therapists at these clinical sites. And uh, they all have really good things to say about our program. They all know our program. So um, it's, it's got a really good foundation that, that we're all building off of. So it's definitely worth the drive. It's, it's a long drive, but, but it's worth it. And Amy, if I can piggyback onto what Satna said, uh, our classes are small. They're, they're specifically small so they can have the interaction with the students. The other nice thing about community colleges in particular is most of the professors already are people who've worked in the field. Uh, they have field knowledge. I still work um, at the small hospital in Claremont now um, as a per diem. So I keep my feet in the field and whatever's coming up. So you're taught by professors who have real world experience, which is really, really, really a benefit. And they can answer questions that maybe somebody who's just reading a book can't. So small classroom, face-to-face -face, um, yeah. classroom instruction, I think is extremely important. And um, you know, you get to know the students really as family by the time they graduate in two years. You know, it's you're seeing them cross the cross the bridge. So that's incredible, and you get you become close with all your classmates too. Yeah, so you get that family feeling. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so what is a clinical like? Were you scared when you did your first clinical? Um, I, the clinical experience is, is wonderful. Um, I think one of the best pieces of advice that uh, Kevin gave us from you know day one was always be a sponge. And your job on the clinical site is to go in as a student and to just observe everything. And so far, it's it's been a great experience. I mean, there were a little bit of nerves because you don't know what to expect. Um, you don't know your way around. And so there's a little things like that that kind of uh, you know, can get a little bit nerve-wracking, but um, but for the most part, going in has been amazing because you're taking what we learn in the book and from our lectures and just from our time in the clinical lab. Um, but now you're getting to apply it and you're getting to see that with real life patients and having um, a practicing therapist there with you explaining things or just somebody to be a sounding board off of. And the further we get along in our program, um, we're given a lot more responsibility and a lot more autonomy at these clinical sites. So at this point, um, being a senior in our clinical rotation for, for this semester, you know, uh, we're getting our own patients and we're under the, the umbrella of our preceptor, but it's nice because you do have a little bit more responsibility. You're able to, you know, get a little taste of what it's gonna be like uh, when, when we're on our own. So yeah, it's, it's really, really valuable. And it's so rewarding, Amy, to see these students after their first clinical um, in the summer to come back in the fall and see how much they've, they've grown just by having that clinical and things are starting to come together. You know, they go out in the springtime and it's like, you know, we're never going to be able to do this. Yeah. And then they come back and say, yeah, we can do this. It's so very rewarding. The practice together. Exactly. It melts it together. So that's the strength of the program and the strength of the size of the program. Environments do they work? So once you are all licensed, can you work as a traveling respiratory therapist? Is there those type of opportunities? Opportunities abound. Um, I strongly suggest they get their feet wet in a larger size hospital for at least a year or two, but you can become a traveling therapist. Um, you don't like the winters in New England anymore? You can look at the green pastures of, you know, South Texas or Hawaii. Uh, or if you want to be a ski bum, you can go to Colorado and work out there. You can work in large hospitals. You can work in uh, uh, hospitals that specialize in babies and newborns. Um, you can specialize in long-term care. Mm -hmm. So there's 
the the world is is open to you as long as you've passed your national boards uh, and that test is good across the country uh, you just have to get a license in whatever state you want to work and uh, check it out so I have uh, students have graduated this past May are working not only in New England uh, one just took a job down at Virginia Beach oh, which wonderful. Is, yeah it's a nice job <laughs> yeah. um, one student took a job out in the Midwest so and another student took a job down in Florida so there are plenty of jobs around out there plenty of different size hospitals I tell the students a job is like a glove you got to put a lot of gloves on to see which one fits just right for you mm -hmm. so try out the hospital see what you like and um, you know go for it you know you'll have the education you'll have the knowledge so it sounds like it gives respiratory therapy gives great work-life balance Yes. Uh, you can work anywhere environment that would really fit you. But what about the pay? What does it pay? I think the pay is pretty good. I always talk to students and prospective students as, what is the return on investment? Mm -hmm. How much money are you going to spend out of your pocket? And that's hard-earned money. And um, I appreciate that. Uh, and what are you going to get in return? What kind of is your pay? So we like to say that if you spend between sixteen dollars and $18,000 over a two-year period, um, doesn't include gas driving back and forth from Nashua, yeah. <laughs> but uh, if you spend that and um, depending on how many credits you transfer in, you can actually go out, take your test, and get a job that pays between fifty-six and fifty-seven thousand dollars a year, and that's from the U.S. labor statistics. That's not my number I pulled out of the year, but the U.S. government labor statistics. Uh, and the openings are quite good for respiratory therapy in the future. Uh, up till 2025, they said there's supposed to be a 19 percent increase in job openings for respiratory therapists across the country. Uh, people are getting older. Let's face it. You know, their their habits. Um, are catching up with them. Uh, new advances in medicine are keeping people uh, going longer. So the aging population, uh, along with newer um, uh, advances in medicine, uh, go a long way in keeping us employed for a long time. Uh, in 44 years, I've never not had a job in respiratory therapy. So I think the future is bright. Your return on investment, $18,000 for a $57,000 salary, I think is pretty good after two years of being in the field. And you're always going to have a job there. So I think the prospects are very bright. I'll take it. It sounds amazing. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we end? Um, I just I think it's a great opportunity. I would like everybody, if they're at least interested in it, to certainly give me a call at the college and um, I can talk to them more about that. I can tour, you can tour the facilities. You even, if you ha want to, sit in on one of the classes, see what it's like to sit in and, and the information that we give. So we're looking at anybody from new, brand new high school uh, graduates to uh, people who've been in the, their own careers for a while and want to get out of it or want to change and uh, want to try something new. So if you want to have a good rewarding field in a uh, job market that's going to be wide open, making fairly good money across the country, you should really look into respiratory therapy. And one last, last thing I want to add is we are the only program in New Hampshire. So River Valley Community College has the only respiratory therapy program. There's only three in Upper New England, uh, one in Vermont, one in Maine, and us in, uh, in Claremont. So if you want to go to it, come on over and uh, see what the small campus like River Valley is all about. We have a great time at River Valley, and you can find out more information about River Valley at www.rivervalley.edu, and you can come visit our campus for a tour any day of the week, Monday through Friday, and we offer, also offer programs in nursing, liberal arts, business, and many more. And don't forget all three of our academic centers, Lebanon, Keene, and Claremont. <laughs>